Hello everybody and welcome to the Sovereign Village Project. I'm out here in our brand new greenhouse slash temporary rabbit quarters. These are not their final housing. We're going to have much better cages for them soon and a much better shed. But uh, of course it's just temporary like ourselves. They're in transition as we move and build out this homestead. And I wanted to make a video about feeding animals, particularly in the winter and particularly rabbits. Um, but also just kind of a general video to get people thinking. If we are claiming self-sufficiency, we are not truly self-sufficient if we are relying on this stuff because this is susceptible to breakdown. This is grain. And we can see what's happening right now in the supply chains. We can see what's happening with fertilizers. We can see what's happening with tractors, with farmers una unable to get parts for their tractors, fuel prices skyrocketing, crazy weather that's gonna leave the, many of the fields of the Midwest really damp and soggy and hard to work. All this compounding to make food prices at least skyrocket, but maybe become unavailable for your animals. So you're not really self-sufficient if you can't feed your animals. So we should all be searching for the solutions. And we tend to look for the one solution. Like, what's the one thing I can grow and feed my rabbits? What's the one thing I can feed my chickens? But really, the answer lies across your farm and around your property, and it depends on you. It's, it's up to you to figure out what that is, because what grows on my property doesn't necessarily grow on your property. So you really just have to feel free and feel, feel like you have license to test things out. If you do things in small doses, they're probably not going to die. The odds are very high that they're not going to die. You're probably quite safe to just experiment with very, there's very few things that are really highly poisonous to where they eat a bite or two and they die. So you do things in small doses and you introduce it a little bit at a time. But also animals will generally not eat anything that's bad for them if they have lots of options. So like everything in farming, diversity is key. You want to give them lots and lots of stuff. But let's talk about what these rabbits like. So right now, it's very limited what I can get them. My garden is covered up. There's no grass. You know, these guys can live off almost entirely grass, but I just can't access any of that food right now. So I'm testing other things. Now, rabbits love woody materials. They're forest creatures, so they actually need to chew woody materials to keep their teeth down. That's what a lot, a lot of people replace that with hay, but you can just use sticks. Not any stick, but a lot of kinds of sticks. This particular one is sumac. I love sumac. It's an incredibly versatile plant that grows like a weed. Uh, many people consider, consider it a weed. It is not poisonous, unless you're talking about poisonous sumac, which is not actually sumac. So anyway, all that to say, they love sumac sticks and they love sumac leaves. Um, they also love willow. They love oak. Um, there's a number of basically tree forages you can give to lots of different animals, rabbits included, and they love them. It's an activity for them as well. Since they're in cages right now, I'm trying to keep them from being bored. So I give them something that, you know, chewing to them, that's like watching TV. They love it. So those are your woody materials and there's tons of trees out there and you just kind of have to research and try things out realizing that the internet is full of absurd information. They'll say things like, oak leaves will kill your rabbits. No, they won't. I've given these, these guys have lived off oak, oak leaves. If you took a rabbit that's never eaten an oak leaf and you give it nothing but oak leaves, yes, it's probably gonna get really sick. That's way too much tannins. You have to introduce these things slowly into their diet, same as a human. Um, but there's not really one size fits all solutions for feeding animals and you're not going to have one solution. You, you need a plethora of solutions. You need lots and lots of different systems and that also makes it diverse and that way something can fail and you won't have a problem. So I feed them sticks, leaves, and I just grab leaves by the handful. I mean dried leaves after they've fallen off the trees. So um, that's a source that you can actually store just like hay. Um, they love comfrey, plantain, grasses, clovers, hay, straw, uh, turnip greens, all the greens from the garden, my root crops, there's some turnips in there right now. They just finished up some of them. But there's a ton of food sources all around you, both in the wild plants and in your farmed plants as well, to take advantage of. And so I encourage everyone, for whatever animal systems they have, to really feel like they have license to get outside of the box and start experimenting with stuff because what's going to feed my chickens, if you can see them back there, <laughs> and my rabbits is what's around me. So that forest out there provides just as much feed or more for my animals than a garden would or a field would. Um, out there we have tons of tree haze, we have lots of forageables, we have lots of woods for them to chew on. And of course the same applies to these guys. There's so much abundant food on your farm and in nature for your animals, and we really have to get outside of this industrial agricultural mindset of feeding our animals if we're, if we're gonna survive, and if our animals are gonna survive, and if we're gonna keep proteins and fats in our diets. So everyone, get out there and start experimenting with stuff. It's a lot of fun, it's like a constant experiment. You can keep track of things, or just do it like I do, which is more intuitively, I just test things and keep in mind what worked and what didn't. And uh, pretty soon before you know it, you're not gonna be buying feed anymore, and you'll have an actual self-contained looping system that is truly a farm. All right, everyone, in the meantime, stay safe, be well, and happy homesteading.